So in our last video, we ended off just determining if a chemical equation was balanced or not. So in this video, we wanna balance those chemical equations. So here's steps for balancing chemical equations, doing a formal approach. And so we might, I might balance them slightly differently as I go through, but this is what I believe is found in your textbook. So I thought I would just um, write it this way and I'll try to stick as close as I can to this method so that it's consistent. So first step, it says to place a one in front of the formula with the largest number of atoms. If two formulas have the same number of atoms, select the one with the greater number of different elements. Okay, so that's step one. Step two then is insert coefficients that balance the elements that appear in compounds, okay? That's a key right there. You wanna balance elements that appear in compounds before you balance elements that are by themselves, okay? And you can use fractions if necessary to start. So don't balance element only formulas such as sodium or oxygen here at this time. Those are considered uncombined elements and you're gonna do them last. That's gonna make life a lot easier on you. So choose elements generally in this following way. Elements in the starting formula that are an only other one compound, all right? All other elements from the starting formula, that's the guy with the most number of atoms, and then all other elements in compounds, okay? And like I said, we'll, I'll, I'll try to stick to that as close as I can throughout the video and the videos to come. After that, you wanna place formulas in front of those uncombined elements that we talked about before and use fractions if you need to. And then clear fractions, if any, by multiplying all the coefficients by the lowest common denominator and remove any one coefficients that remain in front of the starting formula. Okay, and check to make sure that it's balanced. That's always a good thing. After you write it down on a quiz or the test, just do a sanity check and make sure that you did it correctly. Count up your atoms like we did in the previous video. Okay, so here's some considerations. The first is you can treat chemical equations exactly the same way you treat algebraic equations. So you can multiply or divide an equation by some number uh, by multiplying or dividing each term by that number, all right? And then the order in which reactants and products is written can be changed if you need to, okay? Um, you can swip or flip, excuse me, the order there if you needed to. Don't know why, but you could if you wanted to. All right, so I think it's best for us to just do some examples here before ending the video. So we wanna balance the following chemical equation. Okay, so step one, we wanna place a one in front of the molecule with the most number of atoms. And I just dropped my pen. So give me a second. Okay, here we go. So that is this guy. All right. So now I'm going to balance, okay, or figure out uh, with coefficients that I have the same number of atoms on each side. Okay, so over here, this is what I like to do as well. It might help you out at first. Write down, let's start with carbon. So on this side of the equation, I have one carbon atom, right, right there. And on this side of the equation, I have one carbon atom. So carbon is balanced, okay? So let's go to the next one. So let's go to hydrogen because he's the next element type in our starting formula. Over here, I have four hydrogens, right? One times four. Over here on this side of the equation, I only have two hydrogens to start, okay? So, Remember, the only thing I can do is add coefficients in front of the numbers. So I'm gonna put a two there, okay? So that's two times two. Now I have four hydrogens on that side of the equation, okay? So now oxygen is next. This is the elemental guy. That's why I left him alone. So on this side of the equation, I have two oxygens. And on this side of the equation, I have one, two oxygens there and two oxygens there. So I have four oxygens in total on the right side of the equation. So I can use a two right there to balance this equation, okay? And then again, you just do a sanity check and see, okay, one carbon there, one carbon there, four hydrogens there, four hydrogens there, 
two oxygens, two oxygens, that's four over there, four over there. Yep, my equation is balanced. And like I said, you would generally want to get rid of that one that's right there, okay? And so this is our balanced chemical equation. Easy, so if you follow those steps, it goes pretty smoothly most of the time. Okay, so let's do the same over here. So we're gonna put a one in front of this guy because he's our starting compound. Okay, and then we're gonna balance potassium on either side. First, let's just say it's the first element there. So I have one on this side, one on that side. So we're good on potassium. Let's look at chloride or chlorine. So I have one on this side, one on this side, so that's good. Oxygen next, I have four on this side, two on this side. So I'm gonna use a two coefficient there. And now I'm balanced, okay? And again, you can go back and check your work. And generally, again, you're just gonna erase that little one there because it's implied that it's there. Okay, let's do some more examples here. And we're gonna get plenty of examples in future chapter eight videos as well. So why don't you pause the video and try to do these. These are a little bit harder, but that's okay. And then we'll do them together. Okay, so let's do the same step. So we'll put a one in front of there, okay? And then we're gonna see how many we have on either side. So I have two, I think it's antimony. I don't wanna drawing a blank there, but two of this element here and one over here. So this gets a two coefficient, okay? So one times two is two, obviously. <laughs> so uh, next is sulfur. So this is three sulfur over here. And I only have one over here. So I need to put a three coefficient here. Now I have three sulfur on either side, okay? Next, let's do hydrogen. Okay, so I have one hydrogen over here. Over here, I have six hydrogen, okay? So I'm gonna put a six in front of here. Now I have six hydrogen. And let's do chlorine next. All right, so this is just kind of the steps I take, going back and forth, checking each element, right? As I go through these steps, I have six chlorines on the left side of this chemical equation and I have six chlorines on the right side of this chemical equation, right? Two times three, right there. So my equation is balanced, okay? And again, you go through, get rid of that one, easy. This next one's a little trickier, all right? So if you did it, uh, I hope you got the right answer, but let's do it together and I'll point out some things as we go. So again, we're gonna just for now, put a one in front of there and then write down how many of each I have. Um, didn't want to do that, hold on. I remember we're gonna leave this elemental oxygen alone for now. So I have six carbons over here, one carbon over here. So I'm gonna put a six there. Okay. Over here, I have 14 hydrogens. That's the next element type in the starting formula. So we're gonna do hydrogens. And then I have two over here, so I need a seven over here, okay? So two times seven, 14. And now let's look for oxygen. I have two over here, okay? And I have how many oxygens over here? I believe I have 15, is that right? So I have seven oxygens here and I have Six times two, oh, 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 oh. I have six times two, I have 12, I believe. I do not have 15, excuse me. I have 19 oxygens over here. Okay, 19 oxygens. Okay, so the question then becomes, what do I do, okay? Um, now, right, I'm stuck, I can't, uh, right, there's O2 over there and you might have gotten stuck at this point, okay? So what do I do? Well, here's what you're gonna do, it's easy. Anytime you get to this point, 
in a chemical reaction. This is where the fractions are gonna come in. So you see here, we have 19 oxygens on this side, two on this side. So there's really no number I can put here, no whole number that's gonna balance this chemical reaction out, okay? So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this number, okay? The bigger number, the odd number, if you will, on the top, and we're gonna divide it by two, this guy, okay? So again, you take 19 divided by two, put it on there. Because if you look over here, right, you can imagine this, these twos cancel out and I just have 19 oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation. Okay, so I, I hope that's clear. And there's, I think, more examples like this in the homework, but let me know if this doesn't make sense. But you can see here that the twos cancel out here. If you imagine, I'm just gonna change the color for a second. The twos cancel out here and we're left with 19 oxygen atoms which is what we have on both sides of the equation, okay? So we're gonna use a fraction here. These are where the fractions come in handy. Okay, so I'll put the two there. Now, we can't literally have 19 halves oxygen atoms, right? That doesn't make any sense. So what you do in this case is you multiply the whole equation by the lowest common denominator. Remember, that's something we talked about in the steps. So, that's gonna be two, okay? Which is here. You multiply everything by two. And so what's gonna happen, if you let me, I'm gonna erase these guys for now just to give myself some more room. So you can see what's gonna happen here in a second. It's gonna be two C6H14. And we only multiply the coefficients. You don't multiply any of the subscripts plus 19O2 gives me 12CO2 plus 14H2O. Okay, so there we go. That's our balanced chemical reaction. So again, the fraction is gone and now we just have whole number coefficients. So let's just uh, briefly, this is the last example and then I'll end the video. So let's just make sure that everything makes sense here. So I have carbon atoms. Let me put it up top here. So we can have more room. Okay, so carbon atoms. Actually, let me not do that. Okay, carbon atoms. We have six times two, 12. Carbon atoms over here, we have 12, okay? Hydrogen atoms over here, we have 28. Hydrogen atoms over here, we have 28, okay? 14 times two. Oxygen atoms over here, we have, is that 38? That seems right, 19 times two. Yeah, 38. Oxygen atoms over here, we have 12 times two plus 14, 38, okay? So this is a balanced chemical equation, okay? So if you're confused, go back, rewatch what I did. Basically, when you get stuck like that and you have something like an elemental oxygen, that's usually what this happens for, okay? In these reactions, you use a, you take the one number, okay, the 19 in this case, and then you put it over the two, okay? Make a fraction, put that in front of the elemental oxygen, and you multiply the whole equation, all the coefficients by two. So you get whole number coefficients. And when you do that, you get a balanced chemical equation, okay? And we're gonna see more examples of that in later videos. This is just our first introduction to that as we go through. All right, so that's it for that section. In the next section, we're gonna talk about interpreting chemical equations. So I'll see you there.